Power One family. All right, here we go now. One of the most lively and vibrant, sprightly rumors making the rounds in a local track and field circles is that one of the top Jamaican juniors, Kerika Hill, she might be going pro at 17, just turned 17 in March, and rumors making the rounds that she might be going pro. Hearing that she might be heading to Mr. Ronaldo Walcott, that crew, that coach, we quote Shelly and Fraser Price. Rising camp in the business. Here's a Kerika Hill might be heading there. For those who don't know Kerika Hill, she's the, she was the class two champion over 100 meters and 100 hurdles for Heidel. She ran for Heidel. Right? I saw her quote from Heidel, Mr. Corey Bennett. There was an interview in the paper where he was expressing the view that she did not think she ready yet for a pro. Kerika Hill is also the world under 20. 100 hurdles champion, the sprint hurdles champion. Championship record holder, 12.77 12 seconds. As to whether or not she's an elite level talent, that is not up for any kind of discussion. Right? And that is something come down upon it. Because a lot of discussions, a lot of debates kick in from this whole rumor start. Um, people expressing the view that, wow, she's too young, including our coach. Um, I've spoken to a couple of people and said, no, so they're not feeling she forgot pro yet. And right, right, right. She will go back to school. Remember, she's class two, you know, she never touched class one yet. You know. She will be going to class one next year. But the man said, no, she should spend some more time in the high school and develop and blah, blah. But you know, something think differently, though. I think the, the basis on which this decision ought to be made is if you think the, the athlete is of the elite level potential where the gamble would be worth it. Because this is a gambling. You know? To go pro at this stage of, of our career, at this stage of our life, is an there's a huge element of gambling in it. Because you don't know what the future holds. She's 17, you don't know what will happen five, six, seven, eight years time. But if you if you're looking for a reason to gamble, then you have to look at the indices, which are, you know, her talent levels, what she's done before. And as we said, this is an outstanding champion of champs already. She's no world. Um, Sprint Hurdles champion. She was a member of the 4x1 relay team that broke the world record at the World Under 20s as well. So, it, it, anybody with a reasonable sense of, of the sport of track and field can see it's an elite level talent. Now, for me, when an elite level talent, the people around that talent and the talent itself come to the belief that, look here, I am talented enough. To go all the way in this sport. Not, 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 not wrong for make the decision. I make the decision early. See, like when the Clinton twins them decided the other day they were going pro and that was announced. A lot of people had kind of kind of kind of cautious about that. Say, Boy, go back to school and wait. No, no, no. If you have faith in your talent and you feel your talent good enough, and the people around you, the expert people around you, make the determination, say you're good enough. Forget this professional thing and go. By all means, don't hesitate and go. There's another element to it, you know. Because people keep... Remember, remember Sir Kerika Hill, you know, is an 11.16 runner already, you know, as a 17-year-old, you know. She's world under 20 champion as a 17-year-old, you know. She's a world record holder, a really a sprint, really a world record holder at 17 years old, you know. Right? This is her second world under 20s at 17 years old, you know. There's no question that this is a super talent. I've seen her run. When I saw her at Champs, I said to myself, wow. You know, a whole pa pe whole pa whole pa people will see her Champs and say, wow. But fear wow was a loud wow when we see this girl run at Champs. And if her connections, her family, and her coaches see it fit, well, apparently, Mr. Bennett does see it fit. But if the people, if enough you know, people around her see it fit for her to make, take the gamble, by all means, take the gamble. But my perspective on it. This thing where people feel like, like, like people must get a college education, you know. It's it's look here, it go with normal talent people like me. And like probably most of you are watch a YouTube channel, right? Or most of we most of we have normal talent. Some of we did have some sporting talent, you know. But our talent, most people are not elite level talent, most people have. And my recommendation and my attitude towards this kind of action, you know. Is specific to elite level talent. Mark you, elite level talent, don't you know, guarantee say you're going to succeed, you know. 
But elite level talent, you can't find a better index than elite level talent and an elite level resume, elite level performances at the elite level. Track record at the elite level. You don't want no more better indices than those to prompt you to take the gamble. And that may I say. So I cannot have no problem based on the principle there. With people like the Clayton Twins initially and now Kerry Cahill deciding to go pro. And as we say, how early they choose to go pro. It just, it just, it is left how to how early you, you get all, you, you tick all the boxes, you know. Because let us say, she go back to school next year, you know. And she run her school next year, and next year at 18, you know, she decided to make the move. She would have, she would have put herself, set herself one year back with her preparation for the big time that she ultimately want, you know. Because these kids at this level now have nothing to prove going back to school again, you know. So people must get rid of this, this notion out of them head. Say every child must get a college education. No money in the work, somewhere. You see both never get no college education. Kobe Bryant never get no college education. LeBron James never get no college education. And in the discussion about this decision, you know, one of my, one of my colleagues had it, had, were having an exchange about it. And he was pointing out to me, he was leaning towards that, that, that cautious, that hesitant side about the move. And he said to me, say, look here, it's only 1% of these athletes who you see look promising as youngsters actually matriculate to see that success, you know. And I said to him, yeah, you, you, you choose to look on the glass half empty. Hear how me choose to look on it. You see that 1%, that 1% you referred to, every single one of that 1%, they took the gamble. Hear them decide at some point early in their life, you know. So them are go for this, you know, because at this they want. Or the people them around, or them, the family and them friends and the people them around them decide, say, this kid is talented enough, we are go for it. That one percent where we sit and watch for TV every day and talk about how great they are. At this point, at some point early in their life, someone was brave enough, courageous enough, to say, look at the level of talent where we have and say, yo, we got something special here. Let's give it its best chance to blossom and come to fruition. So we don't have a problem with the youth. Them go early and decide early. You, there are going to be some kids that are going to be able to do both academics and sports. You know. Those are a rare breed. You're not going to find them the diet dime a dozen. When you find them, you bless them and you, you, you honor them and you, you highlight them, make people see them, see that it's still possible. But if a youngster decides, say, is the, look here, when people get education, you know, is a pathway to a better life than look, you know. It's not just to be able to speak fancy, you know. And if you tell your friends, say, you get your, your, your first degree or your second degree, you know. No. People get educated generally to advance themselves financially in a life. Whether they want to admit it or not. We don't know who, who goes to study and get them, them degrees and who want to advance themselves financially. So generally, that's what people study for. Now, if you, as an elite young talent, you're getting offers putting, put on the table in front of you, money offers, with the potential to make much more money, then why would you not take that gamble? Why would you sacrifice that opportunity? Figure you go college and come back out of college, if you come look at work where you probably not can get. Man, you understand the foolishness here, man. Any you to miss it right now, the only thing we want to determine is if them have the requisite talent, you know, because me tell you, say, normal talent people cannot make this kind of decision, you know. Normal talent people go bus book and get to the degree. Average talent people go study and get to the degree. That is the best way for you in this life, yeah. But elite, elite level talent people, I mean, you go to high school, you get, you, you get your functional education. But after that, go put, go make that gamble. You see what I'm saying? What do you think about when you think? Yeah? What do you think about when you think? Kerry can in loud, man. And a normal talent, man. If she go in the fit or three years, she can, man. She come back out and go to college. If she so desires, if the people around her think that she, 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 she give it up and go to college, go to college. If she want that makes you feel actualized and makes you feel, makes you feel good, better about herself. Leave it up, leave it and go to college. But I think in a lot of these cases with athletes and especially with athletes and artists and entertainers and them kind of people, eh, them people don't need no, no college degree, my boss. If you're good enough, me, I have to keep saying that, you know, I have to keep putting up that disclaimer. But then again, the question would be, how you know whether you're good enough or not? That is where the gamble come in. 
And there are a lot of people who thought they were good enough and never turned out good enough, you know. Now, that is when now you just want to do the conventional secure thing, you know. The, the thing that is less of a gamble. Go get in a, in a, in a university and do, and do your degree. Go get a skill. Go learn a skill. Go, go learn to do something else. Because you miscalculated your level of talent. <laughs> you see what I said? But this thing about people must have to get a... No, sir. No, 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 foolishness. Elite level talent would themselves no such obligation. It's up to the individual. But this notion that every athlete that seeks to go professional is, 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 is too risky. You, you, you can get a bad injury and you have nothing to fall back on. And the fastest in other premises is that not every individual, you know, have the cerebral capacity, you know, to get a degree, you know. Everybody ever consider that yet? So some people just make me run. I can play football, I can jump or play basketball and something. You think about these things, man. Think about these things and stop getting emotional. Be rational, think critically. Anyway, tell me what you think about what me think. What you think about me think? Normal talent people, because I know they're mostly normal talent people. <laughs> but you might have one or two elite talent people out there. We see this thing. We see. I can't tell me what you think. Tell me what you think about what me think. Yeah, man. Talk to me in the comment section.